Good morning, it's 12 o'clock and so it's time for my weekly Facebook Live with residents. Um, it's now, what, week seven of lockdown, so I think we're all getting fairly used to what some of the issues might be for us, but um, every week we do have um, developments and changes that I'm keen to share with you. Um, and uh, there are always going to be questions that come up that uh, we can't answer where they're perhaps individual to your circumstances um, um, and ones which will come up throughout the call. So I will uh, try not to repeat myself um, by answering the same question over and over, but I will start ask, ask, answering them as soon as somebody would like to ask a question. I can see we've got 40, 46 people watching at the moment. Um, so the first thing to say is that um, we are just about to announce the um, agreement to reopen our household waste recycling centres, um, who they will be reopening on Monday the 11th of May. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to get some likes to that one. Um, so Monday the 11th of May is the date that's been agreed to reopen our centres in the, on the Nuffield, uh, Millams and Wilverley um, in Christchurch. Um, they will be having um, some restrictions around how you access those sites. Um, we will be expecting long queues um, and I would uh, ask that if you do not need to attend in the first few days, please don't attend uh, because it is going to be fairly chaotic, I would have thought. Um, okay, James has made a comment, but I can't see the comment, so where are they? Okay, so great news, yes. So um, we will be, press releases going out today. Uh, I would suggest that if you are planning on going to the uh, to the site that you go to our website, um, bcpcouncil.gov.uk, and um, that will have the details with the opening times, the restrictions, what we are and are not able to take. Um, I would suggest that you, um, you know, take a paper or something because you could be in the queue for some time. Um, the, the, the restrictions are quite clear as far as government is concerned. Um, government are clear that it is only a an approved uh, movement if you have no choice but to take your waste to the recycling centre. So in other words, um, if you have space to keep it at home and it's safe for you to do so, um, then we are asking that you continue to do so. Um, we also have to be mindful that we have to have the capacity to take that waste and to send it on to our um, the people who, who take that on to be recycled. Um, should there be any items that we cannot uh, deal with the supply chain, for example, um, if our, the people who take our metal aren't able to do that, then we will have to restrict um, so that we can only take items that we can move along the chain. So please check our website before going to make sure that um, the opening times are right, make sure that the items that we're able to take um, are listed. There will be social distancing measures, um, so we will be letting far fewer vehicles onto the site. That means there will be longer queues. There will be some issues with the surrounding roads, um, and we're doing this with the full support of the police, so we're hoping they're going to help us to do that. So I would ask that if you are going and you see the queues are excessive, perhaps go back the following day. Um, Okay, so um, trade waste, well trade waste is available through usual channels, um, if there is chargeable waste, uh, so that's if people would normally visit the household waste recycling centre but are charged, that might be because you're trade, it might be because you are um, disposing of domestic DIY, so there are certain items that, that are chargeable, we can take that chargeable waste but you will not be able to pay by cash. It will be card payments only. Um, so, you know, that is really important to say. Vanessa, I agree with you. Give it a week. Definitely give it a week. Okay, a uh, swarm of bees. Um, my recommendation for a swarm of bees, uh, and I speak as someone whose husband is a beekeeper, uh, if you give the East Dorset Beekeepers Association a ring, they will come and take away your swarm because there are people who have beehives um, who are really keen uh, to collect those. So um, I will look and see if I've got beekeepers for swarm collection. The phone number I have is 07932538491. But East Dorset Beekeepers Association is a really good place um, to go um, and they'll put you in touch and get someone to come out and deal with your swarm of bees. Um, Carol, um, 
I'm really sorry about the problems you're having with your child. Um, it must be really difficult. Um, the schools make their own decisions about who is able to um, to attend. Those head teachers make those decisions. But what I would ask is if you drop us an email, um, we will have our, our SEND team have a chat to the school and see if there's anything we can do. Unfortunately, um, that is the decision of the head teacher and um, I'm sure it must be really difficult for you. So contact us privately and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do what we can. Um, are grass verges and shrub beds going to be attended? Well, not really a priority at the moment. Um, the verges which are um, uh, um, causing a problem with, with regard to visibility splays, um, they'll be prioritised, but the verges and shrub beds um, will not be prioritised. We still have, like everybody, incredible restrictions on what we can do. Lockdown has not been eased as yet. Uh, we still have um, hundreds of people who are unable to work um, out in the community, a lot of people are still shielding um, and uh, and we also, as you will have read in the last um, week or so and as I trailed last week, um, around a £30 million hole in the budget. So we are only going to be able to spend money on services which are a priority at the moment. Um, we've decided we're not going to do odds and evens registrations. It caused complete chaos in Manchester. We don't have the facility um, to set up new computer systems. I'm sorry, you'll just have to queue. Uh, if the queue's too long, I'd suggest going back another day. And um, please leave the tip only for those people who need to go because they have no space at home. If you've got a garden or a garage or a shed, leave your stuff in there for a couple of weeks until it calms down that's the advice the business rates loophole um, okay so i have some good news on businesses um there are there's a new scheme which has been announced on friday now what tends to happen when the government makes these announcements is they will announce a scheme they will tell you the public that we, the council, are now administering a new scheme, um, but they don't tell us what the rules are for several days. It's now Wednesday lunchtime. We haven't had any more information other than the original rules. The original rules told us, um, because we've been lobbying the government and saying these people are not protected, um, they have given us the, the, the guidance about who that they've told us, first of all, this is a discretionary scheme. As the council, you can decide what you want to do with this money. That sounds great. However, they then said, however, there are rules and the businesses you support must have A, B, C, D, E. They've also said, we would like you to prioritise groups one, two and three. And they also haven't told us how much money we're going to be able to offer. They've given us a scale, but they haven't given us our allocation. So until all of that is known, we can't put the details of our scheme together. I am personally working with our head of finance and the audit team on a scheme based upon the groups of businesses that approached us and said, look, we are falling through the net. Um, I'm making recommendations about the sorts of businesses we are trying to help. Um, we don't know how far the money will go. So on literally an hourly basis, we are moving this forward. I think it's reasonable to expect that we'll know the details of our scheme um, after the weekend, um, early part of next week. I can't be more clear than that because we need to make sure it fits the rules. And if we don't get the notes through from government until, say, tomorrow evening, we then go into a bank holiday. We can't be expected to have it live by Monday. We've also got to put an appeal system in and we've also got to have a processing plan. So um, the best thing to do is register for our e-news for business. Um, that way, when we announce it, obviously I'll make sure it's being announced here and through the press, but that way you'll hear about it um, because we just don't know how far that money will go. I totally understand small businesses in shared office space, bit of a hint, Chris, that is a group that we, we are particularly concerned about. So. Please don't worry, we're on it. I'm really sorry, we've just got to ask you for wait a little bit longer so that we can do this properly. Okay, what are we doing to address the safer routes for pedestrians, motor scooters and cyclists? Um, there are some um, projects being looked at urgently. There are some um, emergency traffic regulation orders being prepared so that we can create more space for people. Um, there are rules, again, um, it's not as simple as just chucking some cones uh, on the road. 
Um, so we are we have shortlisted some areas. We've obviously there are costs involved with all of those things, and we are trying very hard to make sure we can move it through quickly. So there will be news on it very soon. Look out in the paper for those emergency traffic regulation orders and support them rather than going in and, and saying we don't want this. Um, the, 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 the greater the number of people who support those regulations, the quicker we can bring them in and demonstrate there is a desire. Will our leisure centres be safe? Joy, do you know what? We're doing everything we can to bring our services back when it's safe to do so. But not only that, um, to um, make sure that when we restore our services that they are um, as good as they can be. We have to be honest though and say, we've got to do things differently. You can't cut 30 million pounds out of a budget this year and again next year and every year going forward and do things the same as they were. So we are transforming, there will be a new normal. We're committed to, to, to all of those services, but we can't say yet, what they'll look like. I can't promise anything right now. Um, there is a paper coming to the cabinet in the next week or so, which starts that process, and that process will have lots of consultation in it. Um, so, um, uh, can we get a refund on rent if you're not cutting the grass at blocks of flats? Um, well, not really, no, because um, most of your your um, most of your council tax so it's all about rental council tax. your council tax goes to about 600 services um you know we're, we're spending about 12 million pounds more this year on most of the services that are at the sharp end adult social care children's care environment mortuary services um, if you're in a private development um they, and you're paying rent then i would suggest taking that with your landlord if your landlord is the council then obviously same applies actually the council don't have the money to do that we've just housed over 200 rough sleepers from our housing budget so i think that's the, where our priority has been um you know i'm afraid cutting grass isn't isn't really a priority at the moment um i'm not quite sure put it all in land landfill or I, I can't really comment on that i don't know what that's referring to um Roy, you didn't. Uh, we're not listening to the public. We're actually listening to the science. So, yeah, all of these services were going to reopen at some point. They're reopening when it's safe to do so. Um, so, you know, if 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 it, if it's your particular bit of lobbying, well, great. Thank you very much. But the reality is, uh, we're doing what's right for the wider public. I still don't believe it's an essential visit to go to the tip. Um, at the end of the day. If you have a garden, you have a garage, you have a shed, keep your stuff in your garden, your garage or your shed. Um, you know, I, I think there are other reasons why you shouldn't be going out. And uh, for a few people, um, there are reasons they need to go to the tip, but I don't think it applies to most people. Um, but that's not for me to judge. I, it, I don't make the rules. Um, grants, I'm, I'm, I've already covered grants, so um, I won't go into that. I would suggest going back to, to what I've said about five minutes ago. Um, the other thing I would say about the, the support for business, it's not possible at the moment for us to have those conversations by phone because our staff are all working from home. They're using their own phones um, and their own, you know, their own domestic services. So if you're phoning up, um, we're actually having to then get someone to go and pick up all those messages and then respond to those messages in the coming days. If you can email, it's far, far easier because um, if you go to the, the, the website and go through our business support email, they can actually look at those from home. Um, so it, it just is a lot easier than, than phoning and leaving lots of messages. It, it, you know, you're just going to clog up the system. So please um, remember that our staff are also working in those uh, um, difficult circumstances. Okay, Rowena, um, the verges, I love the longer verges and I think there's a, um, there, there, there is a move in lots of places to actually let our wildlife um, have a little bit of uh, space. So, um, okay. Some paths and pavements are too narrow for two meters. Yes, Mark, I know all about your, your suggestion. I've dealt with it. I'm not going to go into the details. So, um, do, 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 can we put cardboard out to be collected with our big bin? Um, at the end of the day, you need to only put your bin out. Anything that's in addition to your bin, we don't have the capacity to collect. The, the issue is that our rounds are very carefully managed to make sure that we can get round to every house uh, with one bin full of waste. Uh, and then we know exactly when our staff have their break schedule, when their fuel is, how far the fuel will go. I've spent eight hours on a refuse lorry. It is absolutely fantastic system. If people start putting additional waste out, 
you simply can't get round as quickly. And that then means that you run the risk that parts of the service don't get done within a day because they're their shift pattern ends. The drivers are only allowed to drive for a certain amount of time. Um, you know, so we have to be mindful of that. So please just put what you normally would put, i.e. one bin full. Your cardboard should be going in your recycling anyway. and should be crushed to go down into your recycling bin. Um, okay, um, Sydney, I will get someone to reply about the business email for working from home um, because I don't have it off the top of my head. Uh, who do we contact about businesses? Joanna, you need to wait, please, um, until we're able to announce the details of our new program. Please sign up um, via the website for our e-news and tick the business um, one, and we'll make sure then that anything that comes out about new um, grant schemes or anything else is going out to businesses that way. When will we introduce foreign doctors residents? Well, I'm um, sorry, not, not anything to do with the council. Please, you need to direct your government problems to the government and the NHS problems to the NHS, I'm only going to be able to deal with council queries here. BCP Council a few minutes ago has just put up the um, how to sign up. Okay, I cannot use a messaging service or a formal letter, email, yeah, uh, Sydney, we're going to come back to that. Right, I'm going to work my way through um, first few minutes. Recycling centres are opening on Monday, all three of them. Uh, the, the press release is being um, printed in the next hour or so. Um, so go to the website, all the details are there, the guidance, uh, there will be delays, take your newspaper, well, obviously don't use your newspaper while you're driving, but while you're parked up, that's really helpful. Um, Amanda, I feel for you, there are lots of people who won't be going back to work for, in the short term, and um, the, the schemes we have are, are, are the schemes we have. Um, there is a bounce back loan that was announced by the government um, in the last week. Um, so they may be an option for you, but unfortunately, I can't. I can't really comment on that. Um, Richard, a specific comment about charities holding meetings in the council offices. I don't know when the council offices will be reopening. Not for some time. Most council staff, members, etc., will be carrying on working from home for the foreseeable future. So I would probably suggest um, that we won't be uh, allowing anyone other than those that must go in to go into the council, um, because at the end of the day. Um, we've got to think about public safety okay i'm not going to talk any more about other people's ideas about how you might make the uh, tips work better feel free to chat amongst yourself but our professional team have actually um sorted out the way that they can make it work for us as staff for you as the public and that's um as far as it's going to go uh, adam comment about not uh, not reverting to economy as before i'm using the phrase reset we're not recovering we're not going back to the way it was uh, we're going to start afresh. Um, but we need to take people with us. There are people who want to go back um, and we have to take people with us because, um, you know, I sort of talk about the carrot and the stick, okay? If you just do the stick without the carrot, then what someone's going to do is they can get a bigger stick and they're going to whack you with it. So, you know, we've got to give people the carrot. We've got to give people the, the means and the reasons and the, the, the systems and the IT so that they can move forward. If all we do is say, you're not going to do this, they'll just say, stuff you, I'm doing it. Um, so it is about how we do it. And that's the same for the council. Nothing will be the same with the council now. Our transformation programme, which I'm sure you've heard about, um, is going to be advanced faster, harder. We're going to be making much more difficult decisions. And whereas we might have said, do you know what? We'll take a couple of years to sort that issue out. We're going to have to sort it out within a matter of months. Uh, that means we're going to have to spend some money on some things that we wouldn't have spent on for a couple of years. And it means we're going to have to rein back on spending on other things that we were going to do imminently because actually they don't serve the purpose of moving us forwards. OK, um, right. Um, da, 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 I'm desperately. OK, Brett, I, I'm looking forward to the pool park tennis courts opening. I love your free Sunday morning sessions. I've brought my daughter on a number of occasions. And um, we are looking at how we can best help to unlock. Um, we are expecting, like you are, that on Sunday, Boris will be making some announcements. We don't know what they are. Um, you might think we get advance notice. I guarantee you we don't. Um, and we're looking carefully at how the, the socially distanced things, like tennis, like golf, things like that, might be able to come back a bit quicker than things that require close contact. 
but those decisions aren't made yet. So as soon as we're able to do it, we will, because we know people are desperate to get back to some sort of normality. But as I said to the guy before, it's a new normal, not the old normal. What should we do if residents are consistently flouting the lockdown rules? So lockdown is formally policed by the police. Um, however, they have capacity. They can't go to every property where somebody is, you know, stood on the doorstep of somebody else's house as much as we might like them to do. Um, they are having to prioritise where there are real health and safety issues, where there are people who are consistently flouting the, law, the rules. And where that's happening, the request I've had from the assistant chief and chief constable uh, is use their website, the Report It function on Dorset Police website, to actually notify them of the details. Everything on there gets recorded. I know it's frustrating because you can't actually speak to someone, but they it happens immediately. So, you know, it's, it's really important that you do um, go on there, put your concerns down. If there are consistent problems, we will do what we can to support. Okay, there are 123 new comments, so I'm working as fast as I can. Um, green bins being emptied, yes they are. Tips are reopening on Monday. Um, dog walking, okay, so the system with dog walking is normally after the 1st of May, you can't walk your dogs on the beach. Um, we have, we're currently, people can't go and sit on the beach, build sandcastles, have a picnic, read a book, have a sunbathe. That, that's not happening, and we're not expecting that to change imminently. We're expecting there to be more freedom to move about, but not more freedom to, to just, you know, sit. Therefore, it makes sense for us to enable people who live near to the beach to allow them to walk their dogs for a bit longer on the beach, on a lead. So the rules have been relaxed so that you can continue to walk your dog on the beach, on a lead, until the 22nd of May. We will be reviewing that again. And clearly, if the lockdown rules have been relaxed and people are being encouraged to sit socially distanced and enjoy the beach in a traditional way, it wouldn't be appropriate to have the, the those people, dogs and children and, and picnics mixing particularly. So we won't be changing the rules before the 22nd of May because we've made that announcement and we think it's the right thing to do. Um, so if you, if, if you know, you just need to be sensible really. Okay, relocating nursery grants to nurseries that stayed open. Um, Peter, I don't know if you're involved in the nursery sector, but we have not taken away any of the funding from any nursery because we recognise that for nurseries that have closed, they still have the same overheads in a lot of cases. Where nurseries that have stayed open have taken additional children, we have provided additional funding for those children. Um, so people have had extra funding to take those children, but the others haven't lost out. So they're not being left high and dry. I don't think that's necessarily the same across the whole uh, country. Um, but I can only speak for BCP, that our nurseries are still receiving their funding. Um, okay, right. Um, David, I'm sorry you don't like the answer. Um, a lot of us are paying for things that we're not supplying. I'm not getting access to a library right now, which is something I access on a weekly basis. Um, but we're in an international emergency, so um, I, the grass isn't going to be cut straight away. It is not a priority. Um, school appeals should still be going ahead as normal, Vicky. So if you've got an appeal, go for the normal process. We will be making sure that your appeal can be heard as quickly as possible, but it will have to be heard virtually. There are no um, live meetings taking place. How do I get cancer treatment from RBH? Um, you, you need to speak to the NHS. I'm sorry, it's not something that I can help you with. So I, I suggest contacting the hospital for that. It's not something that we really can answer. Um, okay, testing centre. Um, the reason, haha, Jenny, right, there's a reason there's no postcode attached um, to the testing centre because it doesn't have a postcode. And if we were to put a postcode on, as I'm sure my ward colleague, uh, Councillor Judy Butt, who I'm fairly sure is listening in, she told me she was going to, hi Judy, um, as she identified at the time, um, putting the postcode on that's closest takes you to somewhere else in Creekmore and leads to people wandering around Creekmore saying, where's the testing station, which isn't what we want. So there are very clear, um, on the app, it says how to get there, um, and there is signage up. We are deliberately not putting the postcode on because it will take you to the wrong place. Talking testing, 
Um, you need an appointment, so please do not turn up at the Creekmore testing station if you don't have an appointment. That would be totally inappropriate. Um, you will be turned away. You will be asked to make an appointment. If you try and make an appointment and it tries to give you a test in Belfast, as we've seen, or Edinburgh or Weymouth, just keep trying. Um, it's not our system. It's the government system. And if they've run out of tests or they've run out of slots, they will very often send you off somewhere else. Um, Clearly, you want to be getting a test in Creekmore. There is a mobile testing unit that's going out to Blamford, Weymouth, Bridport, uh, Dorchester, I think. So you may be offered a test there if they've got more capacity. But if you want to test in Creekmore, you sort of need to come out the system and go back in when there is availability. Can you attend and speak at planning meetings? Um, so you can attend planning meetings. All of our meetings are available via Skype. We do not use Zoom. It's not a secure platform. Um, we are not able to have live speaking at the meetings. And the reason for that is because um, it's very difficult to kick someone out of a meeting. So you have to be invited into the whole meeting. Um, the, the, the decision that's been taken is that if you wish to speak on an item, you need to put your paper, your, your, your comments in in advance. Um, you would always have had to have notify in advance you wanted to speak. Same with planning. So you do that in the normal way, but we need your written statement and it will be read out. Um, okay, um, I can't comment on practical driving tests. You need to speak to the DVLA around, around driving tests. Um, BCP volunteer scheme, some will be allocated. Oh my goodness, if you need some help, and I've missed you there, you need to call 0300 123 7052. The Together We Can program is still running. We've taken, we've de dealt with 10, nearly 10,000 um, inquiries so far. We have got two and a half thousand volunteers ready to go. About 1,250 of those volunteers have been um, uh, have been uh, allocated with someone in the community. Um, my uh, lovely lady, I'm looking after Jo, is due her shopping this afternoon. So it's really important that you contact them. We can do your shopping, we can get your prescriptions, we can walk your dog, we can set you up for someone to have a chat with, we can put you in touch with groups to do knitting, online crosswords, whatever. Um, or if you just need to know where to get the information and which charities are there to help you, just give them a ring. There's plenty of signposting that they can do for you. Um, I know I'm missing lots of things and I do apologise and I will go back at the end when I close this down and I'll go through all of the questions. If I haven't answered it, I will answer it. If I have answered it, then I would expect you to listen back all over again. Um, okay, there's some questions about 5G. The 5G project has already been approved. There's no change there. Um, and uh, we're going to be needing an awful lot more IT going forward. Can we stop pubs, shops, cafes being charged rent by landlords? No. Um, landlords have been asked, uh, well, there is no prosecutions happening at the moment. Um, you are still eligible to pay your rent. Um, if you have a pub, a shop or a cafe, you should have had a significant grant um, and probably rate relief. The purpose of the grant uh, is that you pay your rent. Um, if you've received a grant of 10 or 25,000 pounds, uh, and your staff are furloughed because your business is closed and you've been given rate relief, that's what the 10 or 25,000 pounds is for. Um, it's really difficult for those businesses that haven't got the grants because they don't fall in the system being asked for that rent. Um, and that's why we're trying to work with those people. But if you've received a grant, it's not for you to do something else with. It is for you to um, to spend on things like your rent. Fly tipping is committed by individuals, local government, not government. You're right, George. Um, fly tipping is vile, it's illegal, and it is punishable by a £400 fine. And if your details are found on fly tipping, you will be prosecuted. Um, fly tipping uh, is fly tipping even if you leave it in the road outside the recycling centre uh, or at the side of a large recycling bin. So please do not do it. Um, the claim is that fly tipping is up, it's actually down. So And it'll all be sorted because our tip will be opening next week. Um, send transport. Uh, not really time to talk about that at the moment. Um, okay, uh, VE day. I want to finish on VE day because I've got one minute to go and I need to cover that. I will go through everything else. So, it's Friday, it's VE day. It's also my daughter Abby's 16th birthday. So, embarrassing moment here. Happy birthday for Friday, Abby, uh, who's not going to be seeing her friends. Um, and uh, 
Friday, um, it's really sad that we're not able to celebrate in the normal way. Um, and I totally understand people's need to, to, to have some morale boost. But it's not time for that. So what we're asking people to do is to celebrate in their own homes or in their private back gardens with only with members of their own household. We are asking people not to visit their family. We are asking people not to hold community garden parties. They are not appropriate at the moment. There are some great ideas on our on our website about making bunting, having the 1940s tea party, um, and there's some great stuff on the TV. I believe the Queen's making a speech. I believe Vera Lynn is getting us all to sing. We'll meet again at nine o'clock. I wouldn't be in Clarendon Road in Broadstone if I were you because I've got a terrible voice. Um, there's a two-minute silence. There's a toast to the nation. All of those things are happening. There's some Winston Churchill speech being played. Let's enjoy those things in our own homes or in our back gardens um, and then hopefully things will pick up and when we get to VJ Day which is in August if we're able to celebrate a bit better we'll do it if not we'll put it off until such time as it's safe to do so I want to celebrate as much as you but now is not the time so please stay at home protect the NHS and key workers and save lives although it looks as though the peak is past the truth is Yesterday, nearly 700 people died. You know, that's just horrendous. We have had massive spike in um, deaths in care homes in Dorset in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, this isn't over. We really need to make sure that we all get through this together. Um, so let's just keep smiling, stay home, support the NHS. I'll be back at 12 o'clock next Wednesday and we'll carry on doing this for as long as we're in this sort of situation. I will go through anybody that's put comments on up to now. I will go back through and answer where I can as will our comms team. Um, and don't forget there are 75 councillors and um, everybody has at least two councillors um, except one ward where one sadly passed away. But you've all got councillors use them that's what they're there for they're there to be your community support they can answer your questions so please use them uh, please log on to our website and get your updates via email and i will see you all again next week take care